Abba Father, we say thank you. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for this season of divine repositioning. Thank you for the great and mighty things you've been doing from day one even until now. And Father, we ask that even in this next few minutes of your word, let it come powerfully unto your people. Let life be blessed. Let many be transformed. And I promise not to take the glory. Thank you, Father, for prayers and such. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Praise the Lord. First, I would love to sincerely appreciate our Father in the Lord and our Mother in the Lord, Pastor and Mommy Folu and Pastor Daddy Adeboy. Thank you so much for the opportunity the Lord bless and increase you always in the name of Jesus. That the grace of God this evening would be discussing on the topic the repositioning of Esther. The repositioning of Esther. And I'll be taking my Bible verse from the book of Esther. Esther chapter 2 verse, verse 16. Esther chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. And I read. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence in the tenth month, the month of Tabet, in the seventh year of his reign. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. We'll be going back into history, Esther chapter 1. But before we go there, I believe we understood already the story of Esther. How that she was just a random young woman who knew no one but her uncle. But suddenly the grace of the Lord came upon her. And the queen, the then queen, messed up. And instantly her story changed and she was repositioned for a better place. Divine repositioning is God changing your location from where you think is comfortable to you to where He knows is comfortable to you. Divine repositioning is God changing you from your location from where you think is comfortable to you. So you are only thinking it. You don't know it. You don't know that it is comfortable to you. To where He believes and He knows that is very much comfortable for you. So tonight, the Lord will be divinely repositioned you to where it's comfortable for you that He knows in the name of Jesus. So Queen Vashti, from the storyline, Queen Vashti was a very powerful queen who served under the king called King Zazius. And with, the, with what the story told us, King Zacchaeus, in that Bible representation might be someone I would want to liken to the personality called God. What do I mean? The Bible told us in the book of Esther chapter 1 verse 4. Esther chapter 1 verse 4. For a full 180 days he displayed his vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and the glory of his majesty. And even after displaying it for seven good days, the king still gave a banquet lasting seven another seven days. That shows the mightiness, the graciousness, that shows the wealth that this king had. So Queen Vashti was a woman or the queen to a powerful king. One who has enough wealth. And I want to, like I said earlier, consider King Zazios in this Bible chapter as a personality called God. So God owns everything. God owns all things. God has everything. God has all things. God has made everything in his own image and after his own likeness, like Genesis told us. And God gave us a single rule that we come and that we dominate and that we begin to live as he has lived or as he's living currently. But something happened. The devil tricked us into understanding that or into thinking that basically because of us not being perfect in our own way, we can begin to make out ways 
by our own self. So the Bible told us in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, that the serpent came and deceived Eve in the garden. And through the deceit of Eve, making Eve think less of herself as who God has created her to be, through the disobedience, men fell into sin. And by sin, we entered death. And through this story, we realized that God needed to do so much in little time. And God saw that as much as possible, He kept on sending so many prophets to us, so many prophets to help us, so many prophets to deliver us, so many prophets to see to it that we are better than where we used to be and we have moved to a new level. But oftentimes, what we saw was that even though prophets came, men still find their way into rebellion. Men still find their way into where God took them from. Men still find their way into the sin that killed us. Amen. So likewise, King Vashti forgot that she was only a queen because she was the wife of a king. She did not realize that immediately the king takes away her power or immediately the, the man called the king dies and if the power tossed, it doesn't fall onto her again, she would no longer be called queen. So when the king sent for her, when the king sent for her in verse 10 of chapter 1, on the seventh day, when King Xavius was in high spirit from wine, he commanded the seven Enos, who served Meume, Betsa, Abona, Bitga, Abba, to bring before him Queen Vashti, wearing a royal crown. One thing I want us to understand first is that for you to be divinely repositioned, you must always listen to the instruction that stems from your commander. For you to be divinely repositioned, you must always act into the words that come from your king. And in this case, our king is the Christ and master, Jesus. The Bible told us in verse 12, But when the attendant delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come, and the king became furious. In that time, Queen Vashti thought that, Oh, I am now a queen. You cannot damn me around again. I have things I'm doing too. You cannot just come and impose what you want on me. As much as you are the king, no doubt, I am also a queen. But forgetting that, even though she was a queen, she was a queen because she got married to a king. So you are royalty because you are a child of God. The moment you remove God from the scenario, then your royalty is taken away from you. So Adam was stripped of his glory, not because of anything else, but because he disobeyed God's instruction. Adam was created in God's image after God's own likeness. God gave him the dominion he needed. God repositioned Adam to be as he is already. God made Adam in his own image after his own likeness, so that when Adam commands, what people will see won't be Adam. What people will see will be God. The Bible clearly told us that in his image created he men. Male and female created he them. That means when God was creating us in, the, in heaven, what he decided to do, or his thought pattern for us, was that when I look upon the surface of the head, all that I want to see is no longer myself, or all that I want to see is someone that looks like an exact replica of me. So God was creating, and God looked at and God said, okay, I've made trees, but they don't look like me. I've made birds, but they don't, look at, they don't look like me. I've made flowers, but they don't look like me. Even though they show my glory, they are not in my image and in exact likeness to me. So I want to make something that looks exactly like me. So God told us that, uh, let's come together. Let's make man in our own image and after our own likeness. And in his image he made us. And I was having a thought. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me that one of the few reasons why God made you in his own image and after his own likeness is so that when God looks from heaven and looks upon the earth, he wants to see someone that looks exactly like him. So in actual sense, God was not recreating a man. I would dare to say that God was recreating a God in flesh. God was establishing a new personality who is a God but in flesh. The same way Jesus Christ came in flesh, 
was the same way we would have been if not for the disobedience. So what God wanted to do was that, okay, now I have made my decision. I want to create man my own, in my own likeness. And I want them to be rulers. I want them to be over all things I've created. But when I look down from heaven, I don't want to be the only ruler that I see. I want to be a ruler and I want the man to also be what? A ruler. So what I'm created is another version of me. Just that I'm a spirit and the person I'm created is spirit and flesh. So look at your neighbor and say you are God in flesh. Look at your neighbor boldly and say you are God in flesh. Like I rightly said, said earlier, I said the moment you disobey an instruction, your glory is stripped away from you. So your position you formerly occupy will be taken away from you. So you will only need divine repositioning because there is a position that God has kept you that you have moved out from by disobedience. You would only need the very positioning because there's a certain place that God has placed you that you have moved out of by sin. You would only need the very positioning because there's a certain place that God has kept you for his own use, but you have moved to another place. So what God is doing to us in this season is that he has seen what has happened to us. He has seen how that the devil has manipulated a lot of things that, uh, that concerns us. He has seen how that sin is the order of the day. So God could no longer sit upon his throne and watch. God could no longer sit upon his throne and just decide to look over it. So God gave our Father and the Lord the team divine repositioning. Because he's deciding now that it is time that men begin to come into the glory that he has assigned to them. That it is time that men will begin to come into the newness that he has assigned to them. But for Esther in this case, but for Esther in this case, it was a rather supernatural one. Because Esther was lonely of heart. Esther was just a random child. Knows no one except Mordecai, the uncle. Esther, in fact, was not interested in competing. But because there is something called favor, and when favor comes upon a man, or well, let me put it this way, when God's favor comes upon you as a man, he divinely repositions you for the position you are meant to be in. So the reason you are not in your position is because there is a favor that is yet to come upon you. But before the favor comes upon you, there are things that you must do. Now let's look at the case of Esther. What did Esther do? Esther chapter 2. Let's go back to chapter 2. Esther chapter 2, verse 12. Esther chapter 2, verse 12. Before a young woman turned, came to go into the king, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatment prescribed for the woman, six months with oil of myrrh, and six with perfumes and cosmetics. Verse 13. And this was how she would go to the king. Anything she wanted was given to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. So if the world system showcases their beauty structure, or showcases a system of beauty by first painting of faces, giving them mere and oil to bathe with, just to put them in the perfect skin for an experience of divine positioning. I'll bet you a believer, what are you doing to enter your divine positioning? You don't enter divine positioning by just speaking about it. You don't enter divine positioning by just singing it. You enter the very position by praying it out. So Esther prepared. The same way you have to prepare to enter your divine positioning. So God will not force his will upon you. God is not a forcer of will. Even if God needs you, God will still wait for you to beckon unto him to come before he comes. A brief example was in the book of Acts. 
Our Lord Jesus told them that you want the power of the Holy Ghost. And it is simple to get. All you have to do is to tarry and wait. That means there was a preparation for the repositioning they were about to enter. There was a preparation they had in mind. There was a preparation that they instituted for the divine repositioning that was about to happen to them. So for Esther to be divinely repositioned, she had to first complete 12 months of beauty treatment. That a king is about to see me. And before that king see me, I must first complete a beauty treatment. That I'm about to come before my God. And before I come to my God, I must come with an act of thanksgiving. That I'm about to come before my God to be divinely repositioned. But before I come, I must come with an act of praises. That I'm about to come to my God to be divinely repositioned. But before I come, I must come with an act of sacrifice. So I am not coming empty-handed. I am not coming unprepared. I am coming prepared for what God chooses and what God wants me to do in that season. And if His will for me is divine repositioning, then I must come prepared for divine reposition. Now, this is it. Verse 15. Verse 15. When the turn came for Esther, the young woman, Mordecai has adopted, the daughter of his uncle, Abiel, to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what a guy, the king Enoch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. That means the preparedness of what she did brought her into a level of favor with everyone who saw her. So before you come in favor with someone, there is a preparation that you must have done. By the grace of God, I'm a student of the prestigious university, Bafemi Aulo University. And uh, whenever I'm going to write my examination at times, I've realized that the spiritual control the physical. So what I do first is to kneel down and pray. When I enter the examination hall, you know, we have lecturers and at times there is this fear that comes upon us students and we are telling ourselves that, oh, we don't know what the lecturer is going to say. We don't know whether the question will be difficult, whether the question will not be difficult. We don't know what will happen. So we have this fear in our hearts that we go into the examination with. And oftentimes, if we don't pay attention to this fear, we end up failing our examination. So to keep this fear of my heart, I will kneel down and will pray. And whenever I enter the examination hall, to finally, I'll place my head on the table and say, Jesus, we've come once again. Yes, I know I study, but then I study small. In this situation, my strength is little. So please, help me. And when I'm done with my exam, I would realize that in courses I feel I should score lower, I would have higher marks in them. Then the day I realized what was happening was the day I had to first go for the first time in my life to meet my head of department for something that a normal student would not have asked for. And my head of department looked at me and said, okay, 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 uh, it's like we're requesting for 20 million euros from my head of department. And I know it was definitely not going to give me. But I was going, that was like, that was how the request was looking like. But I know definitely that if I go with an act of prayer, knowing fully well that God has placed his favor upon me, I am going to get everything I need to get. So I came before my lecturer praying in the Holy Ghost. So when I entered his office, I said, good afternoon, sir. Sir, I came because of this, this, and this. And my lecturer looked at me. This was my first encounter with him. The man doesn't even know me. He knows I'm a student, but he doesn't know who I am specially. He looked at me and he said, Okay, uh, your name is Ade Folani, right? Well, you're Ade as Folani today. And things that would have taken me three weeks to accomplish, he finished it with a phone call right on the spot. And God told, the, God told me, This is a measure of my favor upon you. So while Esther... While other people who were coming to meet the king were baiting with hoy, were baiting with everything, Esther only had to do what an instruction gave her to do. An instructor told Esther, do this. And instantly, Esther stepped into something we call divine favor. 
divine favor was the place she walked in. And when she walked into the king's place, the king saw her and everybody else suddenly found favor with her. That was the thing that happened to Jesus. The Bible told us, and Jesus found favor before God and before man. That means what Jesus entered into was the exact same thing Esther entered into. That by, by a favor, Jesus was favored before man and God. Esther had entered into the king's palace and not even one person could say, uh-uh, why are you looking like this? Everybody agreed with one voice. So if you must enter your divine positioning, you must be prepared. You must follow every single instruction given to you. Lastly, before we pray, <coughs> you need to understand that the reason why God is divinely repositioning you might not be majorly for your own sake, but for the sake of the generation that will come after you. That God wants to do so much in a generation. And he knows that if he doesn't move you to a new level, then things will not be achieved. So God needs you to understand that you are entering divine repositioning, not because of yourself alone, but because there is a generation that will suffer for it if you don't enter it. Many of our teenagers, many of our youth nowadays did not realize that there is a glory that sits upon them while they are still young. The Bible said, for the glory of the young man is in their strength. As much as I, as I love our Father and the Lord Daddy, as much as I love Him so very much, I, I so much believe that right now, Daddy cannot stand for a long time, let's say close to about 10, 10 hours at a stretch. Daddy can't. And it's understandable. He's growing older daily. But you that you can stand on your feet for 12 hours, and all you do all the days of your life is sleep on your bed and press your phone without achieving anything valuable, then there is no difference between you that you are called a Christian and the one that is called an unbeliever. Because what God is doing with the young one in these days is for them to understand that you are not called only to be young, you are called to be young and to serve the Lord. So even in your teenage age, even as a youth, you will serve God. Because your generation needs you. So Esther did not know that there will be an Ammon later that will want to hang his people. Esther did not know that Ammon will come at a certain time and his plan will be to destroy the people of God. So let's assume that Esther did not prepare. God forbid that Sodom and Gomorrah happen again. Because what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah was not the fault of those people. What God told Abraham was that if I find ten men, ten men who will serve me, if I find ten men who are faithful to my voice, I will spare the land. So God destroyed the land not because of sin, but because he could not find ten men. What will God do if you give yourself to him? And what won't God be able to do if you don't give yourself to him? I think this is a call to our teenagers and our youth. To remember now that God is doing so much in these days. Our father said it about two, three months ago in the Holy Ghost service that we are returning to the old ways. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. The Bible says, Ask, ask for the old ways. There is a way that is old. Ask for it. This is what the Lord God says. Stand ye by the roadways and look. But one thing you must understand there is that there are many roads for you to see. So stand ye by the roadways and look. So to be divinely repositioned, number one, you must what? what? You must see. Look. Ask about the ancient path. 
asked about things that the fathers were doing before that brought them into where they are now. Asked about the things that they engaged in that gave them such authority with God now. Asked about the ancient past. Which way to what is good? And take it and you will find rest for yourself. Which way that is good? So even among the ancient past, there are ways that are bad and there are ways that are good. But in your asking, they will tell you which one is good and which one is bad. So when you recognize the good one, take it and you will find the rest for yourself. But they protested that we won't. But in the name of Jesus, my generation will not be part of those that we protest in the name of Jesus. My generation we ask for the ancient good ways in the name of Jesus. And we will not miss it. Oh Jesus. The Bible says an Ammon went to the king and said, I have seen some certain people hang them, kill them. But because Esther has been divinely repositioned, hallelujah. Because Esther has been divinely repositioned, the plan of the enemy failed because Esther has been divinely repositioned. So here is God's voice to someone today that you are getting divinely repositioned today so that the plans of the enemy will fail over your life. Can you hold someone beside you? We are about to pray. Oh, Jesus. I said earlier that if you want to be divinely repositioned, then you must engage in accurate prayers. And the only way we can pray accurately in accordance with the Bible is the book of Jude 1 verse 20. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved. And swore that you build up your faith by praying consistently in the Spirit. So hold your neighbor. Sabarandelai suru vere di kembre le kosati labaradiata. Eshem baru de vendele skibarandelai baru de vele kibaradiata ti sambre le kowata. Asha bi la barande la sevi di viliku birondi biruvandi la baradi atate Asha berendo sabirada valadiata Akum brende vila suvere de veladiata If you are ready to get divinely repositioned, can you stand to your feet holding someone beside you and begin to blast in the Holy Ghost? Sabara ke tabarando la ikete veladiate Esabi la comande laide, asabara de la zari kavara diatate, e bendele skiba diata, a bero ko tikate lai, e venendo li ko berege de vele diate, sabi la comande laida, ali ko barato ata, I am divinely repositioned, se vivi li kuviron di laise, e piro ko toko toko toto. In prete katekai, robo da bala da bala da bala diata. E pendola de, e pendola di baro kudevele diate. Sabi ba bo 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 bo. I bariko de, e si varadiata. I am divinely repositioned. I am divinely repositioned. That the devil will not have a few days because I am not divinely repositioned. God forbid that the devil take my generation because I am divi- I'm not divinely repositioned. I stand as a gatekeeper and I stand as a watchman. I am divinely repositioned for my generation and I won't fail in this duty. Sevila kobre kotia asa baradi laide ebende liko baradiata sembrende la barokote Regeti kate kata, robo bo 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 bo, ibreketai, leko si poro tikai, emprendo si laite, esi laite lata, robi bo katika, regiti kiti 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 bo. My family will not be attacked because I'm not divinely repositioned. 
Sabara dali kabara diata. Sembre loko sitate. Evero bilako mandelai. 